Okay, let's continue with the last talk of today, or last regular talk. Uh, afterwards, there will be a section of lightning talks. You can find the schedule on the URL on the blackboard. And now let's move to DDoS protection by Jasper Bravo from uh, the kernel team. Let's filter veteran. Your Thank you. Can, can you hear me from, from the mic? It's no? <laughs> you can't hear me. Huh? That's good. Well, yeah, I'm a kernel developer on the network services team. There's a lot about me, but it's actually quite boring slide. We just move on to what's, what's, what you get out of this talk, because I'm, I'm quite sure you're more interested in what, what you can get out of this. So the, the one thing you'll learn is that the Linux kernel is actually vulnerable to quite simple spoon attacks. And you'll also learn about all the things we've already implemented in the kernel. And I'll, you'll also learn that it's actually not enough. You'll learn about that you have a serious problem with the listen lock if, you're, if a socket is uh, in, in listen state. Uh, and the solution has sort of been stalled uh, quite some time, so this talk is mostly about how to work around that. So, and I'll show you a talk about uh, a firewall-based solution for this problem called uh, Spoon Proxy. And I'll, you will also learn about how fast our stateful connection tracking in uh, the Qum Linux kernel is, what the pain points are, and you'll learn some tricks I'm sure this is the sort of the takeaway from this. You'll learn two, two command line uh, commands which will boost your performance by a factor 10 when you're under DDoS attack. So keep your pen ready when it comes. You can write it down. So first, first the basic tuning. Uh, when I'm doing my test, uh, first of all, I, I killed the IQ balancer because what I want to do is these new hardware uh, netcasts they have they have uh, they have hardware queues and I want to bind each hardware queue to a CPU to get the maximum uh, performance and scalability and I don't want the IQ balancer to to move around afterwards. Another thing I've done in my test is I've disabled Ethernet flow control. That's sort of a because of a, there's a bug in the the Intel driver, which which can cause a single a single queue to overflow, which will block everybody else. And so it has sort of a hardware problem. It, it works if you disable Ethernet flow control. So this is done on the, on the Tainted driver, obviously. So a little bit more about focus, because denial of service can be a lot. So in this talk, I'll, I'll, I'll focus on, on uh, TCP and uh, attacking the three-way handshake. So it's basically an uh, end host resource attack. So it's either we send SUN uh, packets in a SUN slot or uh, a, a SUN act packet and send that as a slot. Or the uh, uh, act block slot, which will be the third packet in a, in a three way handshake. And the thing to note is often attackers will just spoof their IP address. So they, it's, it will just be fake requests coming in, and we sort of had to figure out how to reflect these attacks. There's a nice RFC uh, that's, that has been written about TCP uh, student slot attacks and common mitigations. I'll talk about, about that, what we have actually in done in the Linux current, the current kernel. If I'm, I'm using the language from, from that RFC, Linux uses a hybrid solution. It's, uh, it has what they call a, a SUN cache, which is basically a, a mini request socket we get in, and which the purpose of that is we have an, uh, a minimized state, and we, we delay the full, full allocation of a, of a full socket. We also have uh, a, a SUN backlog, where we simply count the outstanding uh, request sockets since we started, if we're above that limit, we, uh, we switch over to use something called SYN cookies. I'll get into that also, what, what's that all about? 
so a little about 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 the the syntax, the, the basic idea about that is all the the TCP, the transmission control block. So we have a smaller structure so when allocating that. I've put in a lot of details on the slides because I, when looking up, when you search on Google, everybody says that oh, the wicker stock is, the, is uh, 56 bytes. But as I sort of can read the kernel code, it, it's not true. It's, it's because we uh, allocate these structures inside each other and we are backing the, the, the request socket with a, with a slab allocator, which allocates 112 bytes. But, but the important thing difference here is, is that the full, full structure is uh, 832 bytes compared to the 112 bytes. So we say something. A little note is that we actually <laughs> we are going to increase it in recent kernels. But uh <laughs> so some some details about the the, the, the scene backlog. Um, it is it is actually not recommended that you if you want to defeat a DOS attack that you increase the scene backlog. <coughs> you should only increase it in the cases where. It actually makes sense if you have a legitimate traffic pattern from your customers, and and you see the log log in the in, in syslog that that you can see that there's TCP possible sync routing. I want wanted sort of this detailed slide because a lot of people also miss how they can increase it because it's not quite obvious. You have to change three places, which I've listed here. You have to adjust all three to to, to increase the sync log. Uh, there's a proc file you have to adjust, and actually two proc files you have to adjust, and in your own application, when you start the listen socket, you also have to set the parameters for the backlog. Just some details. So what is this uh, soon cookie concept? It's not like we're eating cookies. But the, the, the basic idea is that when we get in the, the first soon packet, we, we, we don't create any local state. What we do, we simply encode the state in the sequence number and the TCP option, and we send that back in the the, the, the SUNAC packet. And when the, the the person on the other side sends sends the the last act packet back to us, it will contain the sequence number plus one, and we can then recover the state. Uh, it's sort of an oversimplified description, but to also to protect against that the attacker can just send these act packets with with uh, spoofs uh, information to us, so we, we we will create some state anyhow. We have we have a, a, a share hash computed with together with a local secret, so we can actually validate when we get the the act, act packet in from the two three way handshake and validate that state. A little bit more details. One of the problems with this is that the, the JSON calculation is quite expensive. There's some more details about SMT counters. I won't go too much into that. And there's also an option to, you can enable it. So what's, what's, what's really the problem? I said that we have, we've actually implemented everything in the RFC or at least most of the things with the enclosed countermeasures. So, but we have, we still have a problem with the, the listen state of the socket. And it is actually uh, vulnerable for, for all of the different attacks. It's not only the SUN attack. We, it, the same uh, socket lock is hit by the SUN act and the act plotting. So, rest of the, the slide here will contain a lot of numbers because then at this point I get, get got completely wild and tested everything. Right. <laughs> So I've, I've done uh, some testing on the, this, this CPU is the, the first generation CN CPU and with a 10, 10 gigabit uh, net card is, is a quite powerful CPU, but not, not the newest generation because I had to use the newest generation to, to mount the attack against the, the, sm the, the smaller machine. <coughs> so if, if we don't have any, uh, actually any, anything running on the socket and no, no one listens Listen on the socket, we can process around uh, 2.9 million packets per second. But all of a sudden, if you just start a, a, a listen socket, 
actually um, or actually want to use the package protector. We we we, we dropped quite significantly to like 252,000 packages per second, and now it's also lifted the the, the hit we take from from the two other types of attack. So that's that's pretty bad scalability. And I said we we were we switch over to to uh, at least in the in, in, in the in the soon soon stay. We we we, we are we, we are saying if we send cookies and we avoid avoid creating end state, why what what's why are we having a problem? Well that's because the send cookies they are under also happened under the listen log. So I proposed uh, some fixes quite long back long back in two thousand and twelve. And they sort of got rejected because I'm not handling the, the soon act and the three way handshake, the last act, act packet. <coughs> but it's been delayed so long, so I sort of got clearance during the last net builder workshop on when to choose us <laughs> that that we should we should do it anyhow. So I've created a bug killer to handle that. Well <coughs> instead of uh, So I couldn't get those patches in. So instead, I was thinking, well, there's also something called network-based carbon measurements. And it's actually the same guy who wrote the RFC I referenced before. He also wrote an article about how you can do something called soon proxies. So what we did, we created a, a NetBuilder module uh, called uh, soon proxies. And it uh, will be available in the latest kernel. And I've also backported to, to Rails 7, so it will also be available, all the stuff I'm talking about in this slide. And it also works on localhost. And I, I actually done the testing on localhost and didn't do the forward testing. And, and it solved, of course, the SYN situation and also X, X bots. And indirectly, I'm going to show a trick how you also solve the, the SYN X attack at the same time with an extra rule. So the basic concept, I'm going to, I think I have to stand out here to point a little bit. <coughs> the basic concept when we have a non-attack situation, and we have we have the, the firewall or proxy in between here, which is where the, the SYN proxy is running. So some initiator calls us a SYN, and we will send a spoof SYN packet back. And we will, if, if the initiator is a real server, it will actually connect to the egg, and then we start the backend server start this we create a new uh, three way handshake and establish the connection and we have to do speech and some the translation on the other side you can see the attack behavior if the attacker are sending the soon packet we are sending him soon act packets back if we are actually sending uh, which 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 is the soon cookies that we just we are just sending back here so we don't have any local state then we are just Shooting back the soon cookies. As he is spoofing his IP addresses, he will not uh, reply back to us, and we we are we are protecting the the listener behind our model module. So the soon proxy uh, needs connection tracking. So we f first have to see if we have a problem with performance using the, the connection tracking system in the kernel for, for stateful firewalling. So this is the first two numbers we just repeated our baseline performance. If, if we uh, load connection tracking with no listen log at all, our performance drops quite significantly to 400 and, uh, 35,000 packets per second. As I said, what if we actually want to use it for something and start the listen socket is, is even worse. So it drops to 172,000 packets per second. It looks pretty bad, but I have some tricks for you to fix it. it I'm sort of bashing connection tracking, but connection tracking is actually extremely fast when for established connection. We have a completely lockless look lookup, and I'll show you the numbers soon. That 
it, it is actually extremely fast to, to look up established connections. Just new connections is, is uh, sort of problematic, deleting and inserting connections with Decker Central Lock. Uh, but we can use this knowledge that established connections is, uh, is, is, is really fast to look those up because we can then do validation against the syn, synac and the, the ac attack. The default setting in NetBuilder is to run TCP in a loose mode where we will actually create, even create a, a, a new connection based on a, a ACK if we didn't see the soon. So we will create a, a, a connection for that. We can disable it really easily by this command. And we also need to take advantage of when we do that, it, it doesn't drop the packet right away even though we said it has to be a, in a sort of mo more strict mode or, or non-loose mode. And to take advantage of this, we have to look, it ac will actually mark the state as invalid. So we can drop the packet invalid be before they reach the listen socket. That's the whole point. So this is the command you want to write down because the numbers are quite impressive, uh, these two. So let's see what happens in uh, the, the, if you do a, an ACK attack with everything loaded, connection tracking, and and listen, a listen, listener, and you have the default loose mode. It's like a really bad performance at all. We like disable the loose mode. We still pass the invalid packet, so so we get the listen lock scalability issue. If we instead drop with this firewall rule I showed you before, we are hitting five five, five million packets per second. We can just handle them extremely quickly. So it's true what I said that it was actually extremely fast to look up. Before we we had the situation that that we've scaled to three million. Now we can actually just drop it really, really early and really, really fast. So that's that's a, a performance boost I, I think we all want to enable. So we also have uh, the, the Sunag attack. And it is. It doesn't auto create uh, a connection, so so this uh, loose state is not so important. So we can we, we get the almost the same performance boost by just dropping the invalid packet by this this, this really really simple IP tables rule that tracks down the state invalid and just stop out those packets. <coughs> so we only have the the soon attack problem left. And this is due to the connection tracking insert, uh, the baseline numbers again, and loading connection tracking. Using the syn proxy, we, 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 uh, we avoid creating any state because we're using the syn proxy, so we don't create the connection tracking entry and we actually don't create any state, which makes us scale up to 2.8 million packets per second with, with enabling the syn proxy method. So I think this is uh, quite good results. I would, I would say the, 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 the problem is that uh, setting up syn, the syn proxy is actually quite complicated. So for, 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 for that reason, I, I'll actually go, to go through the steps of, of how you use this uh, syn proxy module because it needs some uh, extra, extra rules to enable. I'm going to provide a link with a script which works and which actually also it's like parameters you can use when you get home. So the first thing we want to do is we want to make sure that that these connections we're interested in, these syn packets to destination to the specific port we want. We don't want it to, to create a, 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 a connection tracking entry. So we in the raw table, we, are, we put, this, put this rule. So, and we say we don't want to create a, a connection tracking entry. And as I told you before, we like this uh, non-loose state. So what, what we're doing here is that to, to catch the, the egg package from the three-way handshake, we, uh, we, we need to get them marked as in, in invalid. And, and that's, that's what I showed you before. Uh, so we and, and so we, we can use this, and in this slide you can see what what 
quite long rules. What we're doing here is that what's called on tracks, the state on tracks, that would be the sim packet, which we have if we have, have captured these two states down here. And the invalid state would be egg packets from the GUI handshake. It will also be on other packets, but we'll just simply not handle those and, and pass them to the module. The little, uh, there's some configuration options which are a little tricky to get right. These, these options here, uh, you have to figure out what your backend server actually they're using as window scaling as, as, uh, and the maximum segment size, which is called time standing, call, which will support selective acknowledgement. So that's a little bit tricky to configure. That was basically the setup, but in order to catch these um, CMAC blocks, after that rule, we'll, we'll put in another rule which also catches invalid states. Uh, because even though the first module catch, caught the invalid state, it will only pick up, pick up the, the egg packet, which uh, it can use. And when it, the rest of the packets dropping through will contain the CMAC packets. Which, which are invalid and will be part of that attack. And you can also, in this situation, you also find like the, the pin attacks and all the other kind of attacks uh, with invalid uh, flags. And we also want to enable TCP time standing because we are, we are using that in our sim to GUI. Now we bas you basically got the system, but when, when you're tuning for this stuff, you should also adjust your connection tracking entries because our default is 64 kil kilobyte uh, entries and if you're looking at systems where you need to protect against these attacks, you need to increase the amount of connection tracking entries you can handle. So I, w I would recommend something like, I tried to do an example here with two million uh, connection tracking entries, they each, they each 288 bytes and it's only around uh, just below 600 megabytes of memory that, that you potentially use. It's not like it's allocated right away. It's only when you create a connection tracking entry. Then an uh, important word of ad advice here is if you just do that, you will, you will kill yourself again by scalability because you have to have to increase the hash the hash table, which is used for the hash bucket size, you have to uh, change that. It is this this uh, long talk file here. It's it's not writable, but it's writable via the this file for which you activate the uh, the parameter for the for the contract module. I don't know. It's sort of a mistake that we haven't made made this one writable. Uh, I guess because it, we, 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 we can dynamically resize the, the connection tracking hash while running. Uh, so I guess someone is going to submit a patch to fix that, right? Uh, so, and I also think the cap calculation, you might as well take two million entries in that one also to, because you, 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 you would like to, you only do a hash lookup and you, uh, th there's only one in the, in the bucket. And this, this memory will be allocated permanently <coughs> right right away with hash bucket. So it's only 16 megabytes of memory and you want to have a big server protecting. So I think we can adjust it for that. So that's the summary of the performance. Yes, it's, it's quite good as you can see. You can see that the performance number dropped a little bit for the, the arc plot because it has, has to actually check if the, has to do a, a little bit more checking on, on, the, on the packets to see if this is a valid uh, sim, sim cookie coming back. And this, this long task, uh, the mesh optimizer and network testing, you can find a, a script which sets up what I just uh, walked you through. Um, 
had, and, and then, then I talked a little bit about that you had an, an issue with finding the right parameters for the backend servers. It's now, right now it's a manual setup. We did write a, a, a tool for it so you can, so you can query the server. And we have also up, uh, updated the documentation recently, how you can do it by GCP dump so you can see which, how, how your backend server is. And the sort of one setting per rule of your servers behind your firewall uh, are all e like the same. It's, it's uh, quite easy, but if your servers behind the firewall are, are different configuration, you'll, you'll have a problem. You'll have to have a rule for each and of course, it's in a like a normal PHP based network. You 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 you, you basically cannot use it because you don't know the client's configuration. So the future plan is is to auto detect this these uh, these uh, GCP options. And my idea was simply to allow the first packet through and catch the stream and decode the options. And Florian pointed out that I had to handle a little bit more more situations, which makes the problem a little worse, but. I guess it's still do doable. Um, and yeah, and I, I also got some uh, some real life uh, tests. At least I know one person using the module on his real life system. He's using like I, I tested it with on on the local host um, for protecting his server. He hasn't set up a firewall in front of him. So I got this data from him, and you can see the the red line is is the the stream received, so you can see that all of, all of a sudden here we have an, an attack of about 900,000 packets per second coming in. You can see that the, the green line is the interesting one, that, that the valid cookies it finds, it's, it, it doesn't change in this period when he's under attack. There's also, he also plotted the uh, invalid cookies for me, which is really low. It would be really high if, if this was an egg attack. This is a stream attack. There are some things in the graph which we cannot quite explain <laughs> yet, but it's, it's real life data. So one thing he complained about, he also sent me this graph, that was the, the stream cookie JSON was also quite expensive. So this is the time used in software IQ when, when he was under attack and he profiled it for me and said the top one is like the JSON cal calculation. So I'm trying to convince Florian to fix that. <laughs> he created the Boxilla for him. Um, this this graph, I, do, I, I don't understand too much actually. This is what he says he, he does when, when he has an attack. He, this is the outgoing, this is only the outgoing traffic, the, even though there's two of them. He says he, he looks, he quickly looks at the out, outgoing tr traffic to see if it looks uh, out of the ordinary. And he says this is normal because in this section here, it didn't drop down to a really low level. The graph is a little bit strange because there's two information over here. Okay, I'm pretty good time. So you get the, the full story. <coughs> so it's, this we still have, have this, uh, have a scalability issue even with the stream, stream, uh, stream proxy module in. If someone creates a full connection, if someone has a real botnet with real, real servers, which can thus establish a full, full handshake to uh, to another, so start the handshake and just hang the the, the connection. Uh, but I would say we have, we have made it significantly more expensive for 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 stream attacks, if for if people deploy the solution, they will the the the, the stream attackers will actually have to buy or rent <laughs> botnets, which are, are more expensive. So that we hopefully lower this this kind of attack. So the future work, we have to fix scalability for the listen socket. Like Jim say has promised me, he will look into that. And. We also have this locking in the connection tracking with new connection tracking entries. We also have to fix that lock. It's not only the listen lock we have to fix. We also have to fix that. So that I've been working on fixing that. That's what I'm working on at the moment. 
So we have this insert and delete problem, which takes a central log. So I'm working on removing the central log. I've been basing my work on something HMRC made. And so the preliminary result is like in what the baseline is enabled connection tracking without any different struggles is just get this, this quite huge hit. Uh, and my current solution, we go to 1.6 million packets per second uh, with, with parallel logging. So that's quite good because we also, we also when, when, when we hit the situation, we actually create, create the weird connection tracking entry and we will find out that we are under resource constraints. We also have to delete a connection tracking entry. Um, so it's, it's a hard case when you're under attack. So this is actually a quite good number. It's not like the, the three million we saw before because we actually have to do real work now. So we have some time left. I was not sure if we had time. So I'll go through some, some hacks. Or, or workarounds for this. So and a sort of an ugly hack you could do is you could start several Apache or Varnish servers on several local ports, which will then have a scalability problem per, per, per port number in the listen state. And you can have IP tables uh, rewrite these, um, these, uh, these ports uh, locally to, to the host. This is sort of an ugly hack. And I haven't put any uh, rules up here so you can do it easily. I think it's an assignment for yourself if you want to, to do such an ugly hack. I have some other hacks that I'll show you. <laughs> the real IP tables uh, <laughs> setting. So another another trick you can play, I actually got this from, from, the, from the guy who also ran these, uh, these tests. So what he says is that, okay, I still I'm, I'm afraid that that someone will have a big botnet attacking me. What I'll do, I'll, I'll, I'll partition the, the entire internet into a set 24 subnet using the, he's using the hash limit. And he says, okay, the, the size of, of like all 24 subnets, and he chooses a number where he says, okay, I'll then hit around, if, if I create my, my hash this size, I will, Maximum is a perfect distribution. Have max four four hash hash entries per per list. I have to do in the in the in the hash limit. And he says, okay, for each twenty four subnet, I'll allow two hundred twin packets per second per subnet. And he calculates the how much memory he's using with that. The six size hash table, sixteen megabytes. Assuming he will maybe have 200,000, uh, 500,000 uh, hosts attacking him. Maybe he's using 32 megabytes <coughs> of memory. So this is this is the long rule he's, he's using. So he's using this as a workaround against if some real botnet wants to attack him. So he tries to basically this is what I just described. That's the 200 and the subnet, the source mark. Uh, I did some profiling on, on his on his rules, and we actually have a scalability issue in the hash hash limit. Also, it still scales quite good to like two million packets per second. But we can we can still make it make it better actually. So that's one trick. There's also an alternative usage of the socket module if you don't like this connection tracking at all. Uh, you can use a module called uh, socket so in, in IP tables, IP tables module. And what what you do here is you, it only works for for, for local local sockets. So you can sort of filter out to the matches if this is a local socket. Uh, when packets coming into it, and you can you can filter out the, the three-way hand, handshakes and other combinations. It's a little bit difficult to use, actually. I've also created a script for that. But 
and I had to use also when I'm using this. I'm also using the, the hack I showed you before from from uh, the slide where I used the the hash limit because I cannot. It can still be even though I can match. I can collect out the the three-way handshake hack packets from 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 the the the, the real hack packets which belong to the socket. I I I I, I cannot. I'll, I'll it has an annoying thing where I, I, I cannot block them directly because it it's it can't be sort of a, 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 a valid for for the for the first connection the three way handshake act still knows needs to go and I cannot see if this is a real one or, or or fake one in this situation so I'm trying to limit it by the the hash limit module but it didn't scale as well as I expected um, so. This is actually the end. I have uh, five minutes left, I can see. <coughs> so I want to thank uh, Martin Tuffer and one.com, which provided the real life attack, attack data. And I have already uploaded my slides to, to this link here. And the organizers says that you should go in and wait my talk. And we actually have time left. So even though it's unlikely, that I have time left, so <laughs> any questions? Yeah. Well, the <coughs> yeah. Th so, so, so the, the the question was if 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 I don't if if you don't really need contracts and. So what, what's what's what, what's what's the overhead of of of, of, of doing this? Uh, so basically, I, I hadn't told you that the, the sort of the, the bad part about this that I'm a proxy in between actually it, it delays the time the setup time because you will have uh, uh, two two connections being established. Actually, you have the first connection for for completely legitimate connections. You have the first connection being established against the sim the, the proxy. And afterwards, it will it will establish the connection back. So I think we have this. Uh, yeah, that's the wrong one. Here, here it was. So you can see that, that this is the time out here. So you are actually delaying. It's not just something you just always should enable, because you are. This is the time scale down down here. So you, it takes longer to establish a connection with, with this module load. Is, is that what you're yeah. interested in? Yeah. So the question is, what, what, what's, what's the word of, of doing the connection tracking, rewriting the, 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 uh, the sequence numbers and, and stuff like that? I haven't actually measured that. What, what the overhead is, but it would be not exactly the same overhead as, as normal uh, connection tracking. But if, if you don't need the connection tracking and enable that, you, you will get that extra overhead. So any other question? <laughs> Great. So the question is, if you have documented this, how how in the kernel tree or somewhere, it's it's not documented in the kernel tree, but it's documented in, in the IP tables uh, tree. There's a you can write what's it, man IP tables dash extensions. That we have documented exactly how to set this up, basically based on my script, uh, and I provide the script, and I even gave gave our QA the script. Yeah. Uh, I don't know actually. I, I don't see any issues. In it should just you could enable. You could enable it, and you will just fake the connection towards the load balancer, the IPVS load balancer. Uh, so I'm out of time. <laughs> 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 Thank you.